We'll go. Is that all right? Yeah. Thank I mean, you. You, you the boss. Oh, no, 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 no. Morning, y'all. Morning. Uh, just real quick, um, most everything is off this week because of um, New Year's. Uh, we don't have M&M. Uh, we don't have ISI. And no Wednesday night service, Pastor. No Wednesday night. But I do have a card um, from Mr. J.L., and it was actually from J.L. and Shirley. Um, it says, saying thank you doesn't seem like enough to show how much your caring and thoughtfulness have meant. But, through the, but though the words are simple, hope you know how much warmth and appreciation come with them. We appreciate all the prayers and calls and cards. Please continue to pray. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Love, J.L. and Shirley. And y'all please continue to pray for Mr. J.L. as well. All right. Um, I think we're going to open with a song and then do the scripture reading and the prayer and the whatever. So as I was about to say before I was interrupted by the guy with the orange coat on that, um, I was not quite ready to stop with the Christmas songs yet. So if you will, and you're able, would you stand and sing with us, Angels We Have Heard On High. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Which inspire your heavenly song Gloria In excelsis Deo Gloria In excelsis Deo Christ the Lord, the newborn King, Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. seated please pastor you want to follow it with the a word or announcement or anything so the one thing I wanted to tell you that I am so thankful for one thing we started I don't know about six months ago when COVID came in stronger in different directions on Sunday night prayer time is starting calling people and since we were limited to visiting we started calling. And, and those that know that it got put on speakerphone, and whether there were six or eight or of us there, we prayed for them. And often on Sunday nights, um, if not every Sunday night, we, we prayed for Shirley and we called her on the phone, Shirley and JL. And, and every time we prayed with her, by the time we were done, she was in tears and saying, thank you. And in her weakness, it became a weekly thing, Miss Jane and Steve. And I look back, and that's one thing I'm so thankful for. 
that Sunday night phone ministry and prayer ministry. And when she passed away on Christmas Eve morning, um, JL called me. We soon went over there and uh, celebrated that she spent Christmas Day with Jesus. Anybody say amen? I've talked to JL about every day since then. And today at 2 to 3, we'll be in the chapel for a viewing. And I encourage people to, you know, go through and keep social distance. And then at 3 o'clock at the graveside, myself, Frankie, and um, Stanley will handle the service. And Stan is doing music. And she picked out her own song she yep. wanted. She did. So we will celebrate that she is with Jesus I'm asking you to do something, and we'll get an announcement out next week. I'm asking you from Saturday next week till Sunday after church to fast. I'm not sure how often you fast, but I encourage you to be a prayer warrior and fast. I know some people are not able to do a full um, fast without food. Um, Then I ask you to fast of something that you really like. Um, for some, maybe it's your favorite soda. But I'll be full fasting for that 24-hour period. And when you see next Sunday sermon and service, I encourage you, you'll be glad that you did. Um, I'm looking forward to a great year. Absolutely fantastic year in Jesus Christ. This last year has had some challenges. And next year is going to have some challenges. But I believe in prayer. I believe in fasting and prayer. And I encourage you to join me in such. And I believe God will be glorified. Mindset. What mindset will you go into next year with? Will it be a mindset full of grace and mercy and love? full of hope and faith. That's the objective. So I encourage you to join me in that next week. And if you've never fasted before, I encourage you to do it. And this is what you can expect. You'll get hungry. And the way to overcome that hunger is every time you feel hunger, get on your knees and pray. And you'll find as the 24 hours continues, you'll get more hungry. And by the end of that period, you'll be hungry for prayer because your body will continue to remind you to go to Jesus Christ. It'll be 24 hours of prayer. And Sunday morning will come. After church next Sunday, there'll be danishes for you to take home and eat for obvious reasons. But your hunger can be halfway filled on the way home. But join me in that. Casey. Casey. Would you come, sir, and open us in prayer? And just pray for this week ahead. Pray for today's sermon. I, I think one of the kids, yeah, bring the kids. I'm so glad they're here. Come on, sweetie, but daddy. Um, today's sermon is one plague that's hitting the country politically and hitting churches spiritually. And that's today's sermon, if you would, sir. You can, whichever you feel comfortable with. Amen. So, a couple more songs before um, before the pastor comes. Stanley, do you want to do your scripture reading now? Okay, we're going to do a couple of songs, and then Stanley's going to do the scripture reading. Uh, before we do, I wanted to. There's a couple of people that are pretty high on my list are having birthdays this week. Um, Miss Becky Thompson, y'all may know her, and Luke Thompson, and they like cash, and that could be you know given straight to me, and I'll make sure that they get that in a timely manner. Um, Katie Adams, 
Jonathan Campbell also having birthdays this week and then our, our anniversaries, if I could get the word out, Stacy and Tammy Blackman and Alvin and Carolyn McCormick. So would you stand? Would you stand and we're going to do two songs and they're relatively short. The first one is one that uh, we picked out and then the second one is one that our pastor picked out and I think it goes right along with the message. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. I'm seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, you give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I'm dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt, beyond your own Calvary's mount outpour, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will part greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Will you this moment His grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. Freely be so on all who believe, all who are longing to see his face. Will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Good 
Good morning again. Hope everyone is doing well. If you would, if you have your Bibles, we're in Mark chapter 8. We'll be reading verses 11 through 13. It says, then the, then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Assuredly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And he left them. And getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Cast your blessings on the message. Oh, Father, open our eyes, open our understanding, open our vision to see the greatest plague that's hitting the church of all time. Help us to see where it's hitting our politics with vengeance and force. Help us to see where it's hitting families. Help us to see where it's hitting believers and stealing their peace. Give us the power to understand and to overcome. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. And you may be seated. Interesting thing that we see here in the gospel. You'll see in our society, Jesus never went around warning people of the plagues of the time. And there was one, leprosy. I don't see anywhere where he went directly to the disciples and said, beware of leprosy. Although it was custom that if somebody had leprosy at the time, they had to walk around saying, unclean, unclean. The beginning of social distancing at that time. But you didn't see Jesus warn the disciples of such. But today I want to bring to your forefront the plague that Jesus did warn of starting with the disciples. We see it is the leaven of the Pharisees, but you also see in the Bible it's the leaven of Herod. So it enters politics, and I encourage you to examine the politics of America today, and you will see leaven all over the place of the Pharisees. It entered the temple, and is what the religious folks, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were known of when Jesus walked the earth. And if you allow it, it'll enter this church. It'll enter your heart. It will steal your vision of spiritual things, steal your understanding of God's Word, and steal your peace. It comes upon stressful times. And I'm telling you, it is about the world. Today, here we see the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with Jesus. Can you imagine that? Here Jesus has been going and having miracle after miracle. One is from God. The baptism said, this is my beloved son. And beyond miracle after miracle. But the Pharisees were blind. And they could not see. They had what Jesus identified as the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. And what is that today? And how can we identify it? Jesus sighed, deeply grieved. You see, they went to him to test him. They were testing him because they weren't looking to see what God was doing. It was so evident. They were looking to see and find a fault that they could accuse Christ. They even went to the extreme and said, even your miracles are from 
Satan or Belzebub. He sighed in his spirit and said, why does this generation seek a sign? What he was really going deeper is, you're not looking for a sign from God. You're looking for a reason to find fault and criticize. I say to you, no sign shall be given this generation. And he speaks of this generation. And I tell you, this generation is this generation. And many would say this sign going to the leaven of the Pharisees is the sign of the end day church that will be left behind. Because although they're religious, they're not born again. Spiritually, something's missing. And he left them getting into the boat and departed. What we see is leaving them behind with the Spirit. You know you're in spiritual battles. The Bible clearly states, Romans 16, 17, to note those who walk contrary, causing divisions and the like. It says, note and avoid. Because there's a spiritual battle. And that battle is spiritual. And, and when you come into contact with one who has a spiritual battle, such as the leaven of the Pharisees, it sticks with the host and goes with them. If they're not careful. Has anybody ever been around somebody with an evil spirit? One too many years ago, I was with a, a lady in church and had, a, had something awful, dark spirit. And I prayed and another with me to cast it out of her. I wish that was the end of the story, that it was cast out of her. But for the next five hours as I went home, I was fighting that spirit. Anybody say amen? Until I identified it. And cast it out of my house. Spiritual battles. What we don't see, but what you will see, is Jesus got in the boat with the disciples. But the spiritual battle of the leaven of the Pharisees and Herod joined them. They talk about COVID needs a host to be spread. Spiritual battles are very like. It's very devious that the one who has it often doesn't know that they have it. You can see the effects of it, anger, judgment, and being harsh. Very much like the Pharisees. They were known to bring people down with a harshness and put heavy burdens on them. As opposed to what we are called to do as all ministers of Jesus Christ, to lift up people. We are called to be Christ-like and have grace and love and mercy. And one thing in our lives, when we are putting out seeds of grace and love and mercy, we can expect to receive grace and love and mercy. Anybody say amen? Most importantly, from God. But the spiritual battle of the leaven of the Pharisee can very well have a believer put out seeds of harshness and judgment, not even realizing. Disciples got in the boat with Jesus, not realizing what's happening in their spirit. I wonder how many believers, good, loving believers, right now are in their boat. The boat here represents the church, by the way. That's the church. It soon will grow unto many. How many people are allowing a spirit like this in their marriages? When I describe it, you're going to say, oh my. How many families are broken up because the spirit has entered politics 
like I've never seen. You say, how can you say that biblically? Pharisees and of Herod, a spirit of leaven. How many marriages are suffering? How many families are broken? How many churches will be broken, not by COVID, but by the spiritual battle? We see in the end times there'll be an apostate church. Many scholars, and I agree with them, will say that is the spirit of the leaven of the Pharisees that has the apostate church. So now they're in the boat. Come join me in the boat. I like boat rides. We're moving along. We got a destination. But a spiritual battle is there. And no one knows it. But Jesus is about to identify it. Now the disciples have forgotten to take bread. Imagine that. You see the humanity of the disciples. They just fed 4,000. They just had multiple loaves. They have forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. And Jesus charged them. By charging, he is warning them. Warning, you know, warning! Look what's happening in your soul! There's a lot more going on in the boat than the hunger for bread. Take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. We say, what is it? What happened? I say the spiritual battle that the Pharisees were in and were of now entered the disciples' mindset, thought set, and their spirits are now battled. And they don't understand it yet. You would think in the boat where Jesus is at, there would be peace. But now all of a sudden we're going to see where peace is not prevalent. We would think in the boat where Jesus is at, grace would flow in every direction. And grace always flowed from Christ. But it didn't always flow from the disciples. And mercy... Take heed and beware. And the next words I've highlighted. And they reasoned among themselves. <laughs> Which Go study something like Matthew Henry or Spurgeon and others I've read on. Reasoned among themselves. We're in the boat. You ever reason with your spouse? And it looks like an argument. Anybody say amen? <laughs> you know what's going on here. You didn't bring the bread. No, Judas was supposed to. No, I paid for the bread. It is obviously Matthew. Don't blame me. Blame Peter. He probably ate it when we weren't looking. And Jesus said it to them, beware. And as they reasoned among themselves, they said, is it because we have no bread? You see, Jesus wasn't talking about bread. He could make bread out of nothing. He could have it fall from heaven. He could take that one loaf and they'd have more to feed 5,000 than they could imagine. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? He says, don't you just see what happened between the miracle of feeding the 4,000 and the Pharisees coming, looking for a sign, but really saying they wanted a sign, but really they were only looking for a reason to find fault and criticize Jesus Christ and the disciples? Jesus never went down that road when the disciples got criticized for plucking grain on the Sabbath. Jesus defended them. Jesus never went down the road of the Pharisees when the disciples were accused of eating with unceremonial, cleansed hands, Jesus defended them. But that was the spirit of the religion, was to look at others harshly and to find fault. 
and the criticize. And now that spirit was in the boat. One thing we know about the disciples and about every human being is the humanity and the faults. Anybody say amen? But the question is, what will we see as believers? If Jesus were to look at your life right now, what would you hope Jesus saw? If God the Father looked at your life right now upon your death, what do you want God the Father to see? All your sin or the blood of Christ? Think about it. Any sinners in here today? Anybody in here that God the Father could identify your sin? But he chooses to forget it and see the blood of Christ in you. Isn't that a hallelujah? But something happened in the Pharisees where they didn't see the love and the grace and the mercy. (laughs) They saw the faults. And that's a spiritual battle. You see, legalism and moral corruption were rampant. And it's rampant today. And I don't care what you are as far as um, political affiliation. It's everywhere today in politics. One side can only see the faults of the other and criticize them and criticize. Anybody say amen? And I wish it stopped there, but it's inter society. Many Thanksgiving and Christmas meals were ruined because one person had a different opinion on politics than their family. And they talked about this as opposed to about talking about the blood of Christ. And that's in Christian families. Other Christmas dinners were ruined because someone had a spirit there to find the faults in others. And not to see the goodness of Christ. And in a COVID year, I don't know if you're reading a lot of the articles, I am, that are coming out of the Southern Baptist and the South Carolina Baptist, but churches are going through something right now. And pastors are leaving the ministry because they're getting complained about like they never have had over the years. And the devil is using a very stressful nine months to destroy churches. But the good news is God has given us the wisdom to overcome. Anybody say amen? Right now the suicide rate is skyrocketing in the pastorate. Thank God for grace and mercy and love and it entered the boat one thing I loved about this church when I came a year and a half ago I saw love and mercy and grace one thing I love about the last six months is I see love and mercy and grace anybody say amen It's funny being a pastor. I could preach a sermon and everyone hear the same sermon or live through an event and have many come to me and say, way to go, pastor! Woo, woo, woo! You done good! Oh, it talked to my soul! One time I preached a message and one of those people came to me after church and she just told me off for 10 minutes because somebody sang a song that wasn't of her likings. And I was like, well, what was the message any good anyway? No, I didn't like it. Isn't it funny 
how one person can see and receive and be blessed and have peace, but another person see the same thing and receive and have no peace? Even though I had many say, way to go, Pastor, that was deep and it was wonderful for me. Which one of the above do you think I went home and thought about? You know the answer. And if we're not careful, that's going to happen to every believer during this time of stress. And we must make a choice to be a believer of grace and mercy and love. Because where those three things are at, there is peace. But if you take grace, love, and mercy out of any equation, what you're left with is no peace. And all of a sudden in the boat, there's not peace. And Jesus says, beware of what's happening. But now he explains deeper to the disciples what's happening in their lives. He says, do you not yet perceive nor understand? You see where the spirit of leaven of the Pharisees and Herod, the first thing it does is rob your understanding of what's happening. Do you not understand, disciples, what's happening to you? Do you not understand, church? Do you not understand marriage, what's happening between the husband and the wife when you allow a spirit to come in? Do you not understand family? Is your heart still hardened? And he's saying, do you see, not only do you not understand, your heart is now hardened to the Spirit of God. Your mind, your heart, but that's not all. Your eyes, now your vision, and having ears you do not hear. It's no wonder that lady that didn't like one song in the service didn't like anything about the sermon because once the song happened that she didn't like because it was a faster tempo than she was used to, her hearing was gone, her vision was gone, her understanding was gone and she never heard the word of God being preached that day. Isn't that sad? The main reason, the power of the word of God that changes life Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And she received nothing because she didn't understand the spiritual battle she was in and she could not see, she could not understand, she could not hear and her heart was hardened to the things of God. Do you not remember? Hmm. The next thing the spirit of the leaven does is robs us of our memory of all God's blessings. How many of y'all have gone through a hard time lately and you can't remember all the blessings but you can remember every hardship you've had? Let me tell you a blessing. Let me tell you something powerful. Isn't it interesting how the smallest amount of chemistry in an equation can change everything? I almost don't want to tell you, but I'll tell you anyway. About a month ago, I started, it happened two months ago after vacation. I was dizzy. I fell out down out of the boat. And I've been going to the doctor, and for the last month, I haven't slept hardly. Um, muscle pains beyond compare. Did more blood work about two weeks ago. Kind of put it aside because I was more concerned about Shelly. Last week, I got a letter in the mail that says, the reason you're having such problems is your potassium's down to nothing. Potassium? I went to a store yesterday and bought potassium. Took it in the morning before I even left the store. Last night's the first night I slept through the night in a long, long time. Can anybody say amen? The littlest chemical change in your body can mess you up. But that's nothing compared to the littlest spirit that comes in and it's called leaven because it grows and it grows and will tear you in pieces. And Jesus says, beware of this. 
Understand what's going to happen to you disciples. We're the church. And we're arguing over bread when we got souls on the other side to go reach and the gospel to preach and hurting people to care for. Does bread really matter? Their hearts were hardened. Their understanding was distorted. And they became just like the ones that was hounding Christ. And he said to them, how is it? I like it. How is it? How is it that this happened to you? You do not understand. I think there's a lot of times in my life that's exactly what Jesus would say to me. Anybody say amen? How is it you don't understand? Can't you understand? You, you feel no peace. You feel that love and mercy and grace are not in the forefront. But can you understand the spiritual battle you're in? Can you understand what's happening? Can you understand the littlest change in the equation changes the outcome? There is a cause and an effect, disciples. And I'm just going to, and Jesus says, I'm going to show you the cause. When that Pharisee came, Jesus rebuked them and they left. But a spiritual battle stayed with you. And now you're hosting it. And until you understand and cast it out, it's going to eat you alive. And the effect is you're not going to have grace and love and mercy and peace. Anybody say amen? So now Jesus identified the problem. Jesus had always an amazing way to teach us deeper truths that we can live by to represent his church. But do you understand? And the reason I love, I've been in Matthew for a while, came out of, not Mark, Gospel of Mark for a while. I came out of Mark for Christmas series, came right back to Mark, and look where I landed. And I said, that's perfect, Lord. To end this year, because I know this year has been hard on me. How about you? This, this year has been hard physically, yeah, but that, that's, that's it. But, you know, physical is not that important compared to spiritually. And when I saw that this sermon landed on this Sunday, I told Cindy, that, that's, that's the perfect one for the Lord's church and for me. His warning don't let this year change you. Yeah, it affected you. I know those that got COVID are now over it. It affected you and you had a hard time. But that doesn't mean you have to live like that forever. You get past it and you get through it. Anybody say amen? Amen. And you don't have to take it in the next year. But you do have to identify it and know the solution. One thing is happening in society. Politics is all over the place and is sickening me. I see both sides only finding the faults of the other side. And that's all I hear. And Jesus said that's the leaven of Herod. And I see many believers struggling. I see it entering marriages and the marriage not being what it's supposed to be. I see families struggling. And Christ wants so much better for us. And I see the churches that don't get a hold of it. Bringing things into next year that don't belong. I'm ready for a better year. How about you? You say, well, who's at fault? 
If you think somebody else is at fault and not you, you got the leaven. Anybody say amen? You see, that's just what it does. Not their fault. Well, wait a minute. You better go and realize you're at fault first. It's easy to be offended, but it's easy to forget you're also an offender. Anybody say amen? So if you heard the sermon and you blame somebody else, <laughs> you got the leaven of the Pharisees. But if you hear the sermon and say, yes, Lord, I could be more graceful. Yes, Lord, I can be more loving to my spouse and to my friends. Yes, Lord, I could be more merciful. Yes, Lord, I haven't set the seeds of grace and love and mercy all around like I should. And I know whatever seeds I sow, I'm going to rece receive. It's a spiritual thing that Jesus put forth that's unbreakable. And yes, Lord, one thing I want to do is set the seeds of grace. Grace, grace, God's grace, marvelous grace. I want to set some seeds of grace. The last number of months have been hard. And I think every one of us have set some seeds out we probably would like to take back. Anybody say amen? Just me? Your arms are tired? I don't know. And peace is what we need. And God gives us the directive how to overcome this in Philippians 4. It's not in your bulletin. I'll read it to you. Verse 8. What you meditate on is often what you speak. Whatever you put in is what comes out. And the question is, be careful what you put in. Be careful what you allow in your heart and in your mind. And be careful what you meditate on. Because if you meditate on all the things that aren't right, you're not going to be the light to shine for Christ. Be very careful what you allow in. And take into next year. I'm ready for a great year. I encourage you to come next Sunday fasting on some accord. Family brethren. He says mindset. Whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and anything praiseworthy, meditate on these. Could you imagine what would have happened to the Pharisees if they took hold of that in their heart? They would have come to Jesus and meditated on truth, the way, the truth, and the life. They would have meditated on all the miracles and all the healings and all the changed lives. They would have seen the virtue in Christ. They would have seen and believed and been changed. The call for us, church, is to see through the eyes of Christ. We all get tempted to look upon the wrong things, starting with me. But I tell myself, is that what God would see?
when you look at those that are close to your family or in your family, I encourage you to see what God sees, what God looks upon. I'm so thankful God looks at me with the eyes of grace. How about you? And of mercy and of love. But yet while I was a sinner, God looked upon me with grace and mercy and love and gave his son to die on the cross for me. It tells us is how he looked upon us. He not only saw what we were, but he knew what we could be in him. And even his disciples, he encouraged them. Didn't mean he didn't tell them, hey, there's some corrections. Letters and revelation. He saw corrections for the end time church, which is this generation. But for every correction, God gave three compliments. I have this for you. I have this for you. I have this for you. And he built up his church. But here's a place I want you to work on. You see, even Christ looked at us and our faults with grace and mercy and love. Can anybody say amen? Be careful what you take in the next year. The spiritual battle is raging. But we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. If you need prayer this morning, Stanley and I will be right here to pray with you. Think about your spirit. Think about what God wants. And ask God to help you. God will bless you. This I'm confident of. Let's stand and we'll sing this song. Come thou fount. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my ebony. Hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger. Interpose his precious love. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Wrong to wonder, Lord, I feel. Wrong to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Jonathan, would you put up, Bob? You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. It's 
seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name, you are my all in all, when I fall down, you pick me up, when I am dry, you fill my cup, you are my all in all, Jesus. Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus. Lamb of God, worthy is your Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to come and to worship you, Lord. We thank you for the technology that allows us to, to be on Facebook and be on YouTube and those other things that allow those that still are not safe to come out and be in crowds, Lord, for those that are sick, those that are shut in at home Lord it still gives them the opportunity Lord to hear your word still be a part of our church Lord please let them know we love them we miss them Lord I pray for everyone that is here today I pray God that we'll take this message and we'll hide it in our hearts Lord as pastor has talked about today Lord I do pray that our lives will be filled with more grace more love Father that it will start at home Lord with our spouses with our children with our family members Lord that it would spread Lord, we may not be able to change Washington, Lord, but we can change ourselves. Lord, we can love those around us, and Lord, watch that love grow throughout our community, throughout our town, throughout our state, through our ministries. Lord, we love you. We thank you for today. We just thank you for your son, Jesus, for him dying on the cross for our sins. We love you, Jesus. Amen.